and uh, dealing with them in the changing environment that we have uh, requires partnerships. You know, we've seen an evolution of that partnership with the federal government, with asset renewal, and uh, and uh, those funds come into the Trent Severn. But uh, I'm hoping that this is a beginning of a new day and a new partnership with our municipal partners, uh, with the MNRF, so that mitigation measures and uh, with the ever-changing water levels and uh, environment that we have, uh, that we can protect and look after the interests of all of our uh, taxpayers. And uh, just thank you for being here. And uh, I'm really happy to have the Minister of Industry, Minister Scott, with us and invite her here today uh, on this great day for all of us. Thank you very much, uh, Brent, and welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you uh, to the Minden Hills Council for being here also. And uh, my uh, federal colleague, Jamie Schmale, we uh, work well together and collaboratively. And uh, Brent mentioned that has got us through some very rough flooding times in the past. And uh, being on the Gull, I don't know if I've seen the Gull River so low at this time of year in a long time. Fingers crossed. But we're here today. Um, with uh, my colleague and friend, the Minister of Natural uh, Resources and Forestry, to speak about uh, a flooding strategy from the Government of Ontario. We recognized uh, over the years, certainly uh, here in our area, Minden Hills and the County of Halliburton and respective townships and the north part of Kawartha Lakes, that we needed to look at new approaches to flooding and have a flood strategy last year in 2019. Uh, other areas of the province certainly uh, had a, a lot more difficulty than uh, we did at that time. But uh, we're here today because uh, we have shown a wonderful uh, community collaborative approach with all agencies and of course the immense strength of the people not only in Minden but the County of Halliburton when uh, flooding times happen. So without further ado, I would like to uh, bring up my colleague, the Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry. Uh, no, no uh, stranger to this area of the province, but today he's going to make an important announcement. So uh, please, Minister Yakubuski, come to the podium. Well, thank you very much, uh, Laurie, and thank you, uh, Brent, for having us here in the uh, beautiful town of Minden today, um, one of the many communities uh, that was been affected and impacted by flooding in recent years. Last spring, I saw firsthand the devastating effect the floods had on homeowners and businesses across the province. I also had witnessed the admirable way communities dealt with the extreme water levels and how it brought people together and how we responded to the flooding. That includes 60 fire rangers crews from my ministry who spent many long hours with the sandbagging efforts. Flooding affects communities in Ontario virtually every year and there are many different causes. There is no one-size-fits-all solution because no two floods are exactly the same. These are frequent and naturally occurring events in Ontario, and when they affect populated areas, they can cause significant damage and disruption. As our province experiences more frequent extreme weather events, the possibility of serious flooding becomes increasingly likely. That's why our government has been taking action to protect people and property. We are listening to people from across the province who have been affected by floods. Building healthier and safer communities is our number one priority as we build Ontario together. We recognize that we need to have the right approach in place to deal with flooding. We now have a new flooding strategy, a long-term plan to make our province better prepared for flooding, better equipped to respond, and more capable of mounting a recovery. The strategy includes a series of new and enhanced actions that will improve our collective understanding of flood risks and help make appropriate land use planning decisions. We developed this plan based on what we heard from you, the people of Ontario, and the expert advice of Doug McNeil, Ontario's special advisor on flooding. The measures in the strategy are grouped into five priorities. The first priority is to understand flood risks. That means gathering the best science and information available and making sure that you and the governments and agencies that represent you 
are aware of the risks related to flooding. This also involves increasing public awareness and education. We have updated Ontario website to better communicate what you can do as a homeowner to be better prepared and know who to contact during and after a flood. You can find that information at ontario.ca slash floods. We want to help you better to understand the risks and take the steps you can do to reduce the impact of flooding on your property. The second priority is to strengthen the governance of flood risks. Flood management is complicated. It involves multiple levels of governments and different partners. So, so the strategy will help to clarify the roles and responsibilities of each of the groups involved in flood management in Ontario. To ensure that we all work together effectively to implement sound policies to keep people out of harm's way. We want to make sure local development is directed away from areas where flooding and erosion present unacceptable risks. The third priority is enhancing flood preparedness. Flooding is a fact of life in Ontario, but by knowing when and where floods are likely to occur, we can be better equipped when it happens. We can do so by using state-of-the-art science and technology. For example, we are committed to investing $4.7 million in the stream gauge network which measures water flow and levels and helps municipalities better prepare for flood events. The fourth priority is enhancing flood response and recovery. This means putting measures in place to improve how we receive and respond to municipal requests for assistance and by making our programs, programs more coordinated and effective. Finally, the fifth priority is to invest in flood risk reduction. This priority aims to promote financial investments that are strategic and working with the federal government to increase investment in critical areas like mapping and infrastructure. And it's so very fortuitous that our Minister of Infrastructure is with us here today, your member of Provincial Parliament, Laurie Scott. We know that in order to succeed, we can't act alone. We all have a role to play in becoming better prepared for flooding. Municipalities have been doing some excellent work locally to increase their resiliency. For example, the township, your township of Minden Hills, recently completed a drainage study to get accurate information on four flood prone areas. And they've installed a check valve to reduce the likelihood of flooding for over 50 homes. This kind of leadership is exactly what we need to make Ontario more resilient to flooding. Our government will work with municipalities, the federal government, and I'm so pleased to have your federal MP, Jamie Schmale, here today as well. Conservation authorities, homeowners, and other key partners, and together we can build a stronger Ontario. Thank you very much. We'd be pleased to take any of your questions, and I also have my Director of Policy, Jennifer Keyes, from the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry, here with us today if there are some questions of a technical nature that I may not have the answer for. Uh, I, I understand that. Uh, that was not, uh, I was not involved in, it's not my ministry. I think you'd be better to direct those questions to the, to the appropriate ministry. When might there be some funding that's tied to what you're announcing today? Well, this is not about funding. This is a flood strategy. But, but a lot of the recommendations... Yeah, well, maybe you could let me finish the answer. ...in there would, would have uh, financial implications. That's, that's all I'm getting at. Might there be some funding for all the stuff laid out in the this document is a strategy. Right. We're talking about mapping, which there is funding provided for that. When we talk about flood forecasting, planning, that's already being uh, taken care of as well. And by the way, there are nine ministries in my government, our government, that are involved in this uh, strategy. So it's not just the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry. But let me be clear, a strategy is not about funding. Funding is when events take place or to plan uh, or to prepare 
for the possibility of events. This strategy today is what we're announcing today is the plan going forward. Our ministries that are involved in this, including the Ministry of Infrastructure, the uh, Ministry of uh, the Solicitor General, Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks, Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing, uh, uh, Ministry of Economic Develop Development, Job Creation and Trade. We're all involved in, there's so many of our ministries involved in this. This is the announcement of a strategy today. We'll be dealing with those things as uh, flood events take place. We also have the DREO program in place today, as you know, the Disaster Recovery Assistance for Ontarians. So there is funding programs that are in place. Today is about announcing the plan and how we're going to coordinate all those things in a far better way than has happened in the past because one of the things that has not happened in the past has been the ability to communicate very well when events like this are coming upon us and as they're taking place. And the lessons we learned from 2019 is something that clearly indicates that communication is something that is necessary. And 2019, of course, was the first significant flood event that we experienced as a government. So we've acted quickly. Uh, and as last summer, you know, last summer we appointed Doug McNeil as the special advisor. So he, he provided a report with 66 recommendations. And this is part of, uh, of uh, acting upon those recommendations. I couldn't give you numerically how many are in it, but uh, if you look at the, the uh, flood advisor's report, you'll be able to extrapolate that as well yourself to see how many, many of those recommendations deal with flood forecasting, flood planning, uh, being able to better communicate what, what our conditions are. The conditions in the flood in the uh, watersheds is a very important part of it, as you know, being making sure that we have accurate information with regards to what the snow load, for example, is in, 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 the, in the watershed of a particular uh, river system. The, the, the unknown, unfortunately, is how much rain we're going to get in any given spring season, and that is something that we're also, uh, you know, with our more frequent and more coordinated freshet calls and uh, uh, flood-related calls, which all of our municipalities and our various uh, provincial agencies will be involved in, as well as federal agencies as well, mean making sure that we're far more on top of these things as they happen. But being able to be better determine what the chances of flooding based on the snow loads uh, in the watersheds is very important as well. I know it's not your portfolio per se, but the overall climate change plan that Ontario announced does factor into this. Um, and I know the whole, one of the big slants was, you know, to uh, tax the polluters. Are you seeing that on the ground? Is money starting to come into that, you know, to that carbon tax uh, by polluter fund? And, and where does that fit into the picture? Again, as far as that, I would have to pass that on to the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks. But our, our plan for Ontario was one that clearly did not include a carbon tax. We believe fundamentally that you can have a climate change plan and a good climate change plan, an effective climate change plan, without taking po money out of the pockets of the hardworking people here in Minden Hills, for example, who uh, don't have a public transportation system to get to work or where they're going and, and are unfairly targeted by a federal carbon tax. Uh, we believe that unfairly targets rural communities for sure. But I know your government was going to take it out of, the, you know, out of the pockets of the big polluters. How's that going? Uh, I, do, I, I can't tell you what where level we're at in that respect because that's that was a, a recent announcement as to where we're going to it's part of our climate change strategy uh, but as far as the implementation of that is concerned I would think that uh, Minister Urich would be better able to answer that question. Council, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, council, council. Hello, everybody. Sure. Uh, Lizzie brought this, and I'm just thinking. How was I don't that? Know. How was that? Good, good. If maybe we can go down there for the photo, but sure. I don't know if the sun is going to be in my eyes, or if there's going to be room, or we could.